All right, so now we're doing this guy right here. Uh, X to the third minus one. Turn to factor the bottom. This is a famous factorization that leads me to the idea that maybe I can break it up like this. Bx plus c all over x squared plus x plus one. Again, keeping the top uh, generic degree one since the bottom is degree two. Uh, we go on and we try to solve this. Uh, multiply everything by the least common multiple. You get one is equal to a times x squared plus x plus one plus bx plus c times um, x minus one. So what if x is equal to one? One is equal to a times one plus one plus one. And this becomes zero, so a is equal to one over three. What if x was equal to zero? If x was equal to zero, one is equal to a times one plus this becomes zero. Um, that becomes zero. So all you're left with is c times negative one. Now we had agreed that a was equal to one third, so one is equal to one third plus negative c. Or said differently, c is equal to one third minus one. Or said differently, c is equal to negative two thirds. And again, what if x was equal to, I don't know, negative one. If x was equal to negative one, I get that one is equal to a times, that becomes negative one, one, that becomes one plus uh, b times negative one plus c times negative two. We agree that uh, c was equal to negative two thirds and a was equal to one third. So therefore, one is equal to one third plus two thirds plus c. Well, plus, I know what c is. c was equal to, um, Easy. Uh, B times negative one minus two thirds times negative two. Okay. So then you could clean this up a little bit, maybe. I don't know. Subtract from both sides. Let's make a little division here. Whoops. Um, so then we continue cleaning this stuff up. Uh, that will give you that two thirds, and then I could divide by negative two. That's equal to negative and b minus two thirds, and that would give you that uh, one over negative three is equal to negative b minus two thirds, or b is equal to one third minus two thirds, or b is equal to negative one third. Okay, so we've got it. Uh, b is equal to negative one third, c is equal to negative two thirds, a is equal to one third, and now the, the thing is that what's supposed to happen is that the original question which was 1 over x to the third minus 1 can be rewritten as uh, 1 third times 1 over x minus 1 plus uh, negative 1 third x plus negative 2 thirds all over x squared plus x plus 1 dx well, no, not the x. I'll do by dx together now with the punchline here. The punchline is that uh, this integral with respect to x is the same as that integral with respect to x and the same as that integral with respect to x. And the punchline, of course, is that these ones are easier to do than that one. And of course, they are. This is just a log. You can eyeball this one. This one, eh, maybe it requires a little bit more interesting stuff. So at this point, this one should be easier than the one that we started off with. In fact, the first piece is super easy. You just do ln of x minus 1 and you're done with that. That's that piece. This one, uh, you got some algebra here to deal with. Negative 1 third, for example, you could pull out. That would leave you with an x plus 2 on the top. On the bottom, you could complete the square. Standard practice, whenever you have a trinomial here. If you can complete your square, you're going to make your life a lot easier. Uh, I'm going to go with x plus a half squared plus three-fourths because um, if you take half of that and square it, that's one-fourth. That's what I would need, one-fourth, but I've got one, so I've got uh, the one-fourth in there and three-fourths. In any case, that should make it a lot, little easier. Uh, I'm going to try to make a u sub here. I will make my u sub to be, um, 
go with yellow u would be equal to x plus one half. It would really be better if I included that three fourths in there. So if you're not a beginner or if you're comfortable, if you're brave enough, you might want to try something like u is equal to the square root of three over four times x plus one half because everything will work out nicer. If that's too much for you, don't worry about it. Uh, we can do it just one step at a time. Try to get rid of the square, the middle term in there by just handle the completing the square piece. Make u be equal to x plus one half. The differential would be the same as a df dx differential. And now we've got ourselves that this piece is equal to. We've got all the other stuff from before plus negative one third integral of. Let me see with terms of u's that would be equal to on the bottom I've got a u square plus three fourths. The dx differential is its equal exchange, so it would be du. And the x plus 2 would be, um, we'll just replace the x, man. The x is a u minus 1 half, and then I have a plus 2. So that becomes all the other stuff that we had before, minus 1 third times the integral of uh, u plus 3 halves all over u squared plus 3 fourths uh, du. And that you could split up into a couple pieces, negative one-third integral of u over u squared plus three-fourths du minus one-third integral of uh, three-halves all over u squared plus three-fourths du. And of course, these are very, very much doable. On this one, you could probably do a w sub. You could make w be equal to u squared plus three-fourths, then dw would be equal to two u du, which of course you've got up here most of it. You've got your du du here. That's going to make it really easy. In fact, that will be all the other stuff plus negative one-third. And then you have the integral. Uh, the, the u du is worth a half of a, a half of a dw, and then you have just u on the bottom. So that part would be easy. It would just be ln u minus one third. This right here would be a standard um, trick substitution. You could make uh, first of all you could pull out that three halves, which is kind of annoying, and you could even pull out that three fourths, one over three fourths on the bottom, which would just make it one over four over three u squared plus one du. If you don't believe me, you can sub try substituting this back in there. That would kill the four thirds, and I will put a three fourths there. This just makes the trick substitution a bit easier. You could make, um, let me see, I want four. No, blue doesn't show up, right? Let's go with white. You want four over three u squared to be equal to tangent square, uh, tangent square theta. That should tell you what the, the right substitution should be. It should be. Uh, we need a new page. Let's get a new page. I'm still getting used to the system, so hold on. We gotta get this one, and we move it up here. Start it up here, way at the top, right there. And we get a new page. All right, so. Uh, Oh, okay, there we go. So then, uh, you, this piece becomes uh, tangent theta is equal to two over the square root of three u. So then the differential will be secant square theta d theta is equal to two over the square root of three du. So that piece right there becomes um, after that u substitution, it would become the integral of uh, secant square theta d theta times the square root of 3 over 2 that's the du part the du would be the square root of 3 over 2 times secant and then this would become on the bottom you'd have tangent square theta plus 1 which of course would cancel because it's the same as the secant square and so you would get a uh, grand total here you would get all that other stuff we had before plus negative one third times one half times I'm going from this piece right here 
uh, ln of u, w that is, uh, minus, uh, this would be 1 over 3 times 3 over 2 times 4 over 3 times the integral of um, oh, times the square root of 3 over 2, take that one out, times d theta, which of course is just uh, theta, which is arc tangent. Uh, I'll just write it one more line here and I'll let you guys sort out the details. Uh, 4 thirds square root of 3 over 2, this becomes theta. Theta would be the arc <coughs> tangent of 2 over the square root of 3 u and of course you gotta go back and find our u um, so we can substitute uh, the u's in here and get x's. Alright, uh, that's fun. Interestingly enough, uh, there is another way to do that problem um, and that is... hold on Go on to a new page. Interestingly enough, you could also do the same problem in a maybe a much much cleaner way if you used uh, complex uh, complex roots or complex numbers. Uh, really, this you have three roots of unity. You could have solved this piece. Um, I'll just say a couple things about that before I go on to the next one. When we had when we were factoring and we said okay 1 over x to the 3 minus 1 you could factor it as x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1 that was partly true but there's it's not uh, the only way to factor you could also factor it as 1 over x minus 1 times x minus uh, I don't know alpha times x minus beta if you were to use the complex roots of this polynomial if you were to set that equal to 0 x squared plus x plus 1 is equal to 0. You could solve the roots using the quadratic formula, for example, negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all over that stuff. You could solve it, or you could think, well, these are all roots of unity, x to the third minus 1 is equal to 0. You took trig, and so you know they're equally spaced on the unit circle on the complex plane. One of them is here, e to the 0. One of them is here, e to the 120i. One of them is here, e to the 240i. And you, you could get the roots that way. And then you could go on and try something else. You could say um, this could be a over x minus 1 plus b over x minus. Once you've solved that, either this way using the quadratic formula or this way using your powerful stuff from trig class, you would get a solution x minus alpha plus c x minus beta. And this would be much cleaner. You don't have to deal with that completing the square stuff that we just dealt with. Uh, it's a nice or elegant way using complex numbers. Very nice stuff. Uh, I love complex numbers. Alright, we'll leave this example alone for now. Uh, let you try it on your own. Uh, make sure you can try it on your own and follow along steps. Revert back to the video whenever you get stuck. Uh, you should be able to do that problem. Okay, on your own. Alright, come back for some more examples. We'll see you in a bit.